did you hold an open house this weekend? Yes. How did I, that go? I sent you an email. Um, it was, um, you know, I was expecting it to be totally dead because there was only one couple that came through on Saturday when Adam was there. Um, but I ended up having four parties through. Um, and the best part of it is that there's a couple that wants me to come to their house in Laguna and tell me what their home value is worth. So I was like, okay, now I gotta get serious here. <laughs> okay, great, let's meet. <laughs> it's like, it's everything I'm working for is starting to happen. I'm like, oh dear, I don't have a preparation for that. <laughs> yes, you do. Say, uh, I, do. Yes. I do. I I mean, yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, this morning I, I thought about a couple of different things, but I I sort of changed my mind yesterday afternoon. Um, yesterday, my oldest son's birthday was yesterday, and we had a little birthday celebration. Nice. And it was interesting. My youngest son is a fireman, a fire captain, and he runs a sports memorabilia business. Very successful. And my youngest son is a travel blogger and has built his success very differently. But somehow yesterday in the conversation, we were sitting around the pool and having this conversation and the topic of Bitcoin came up. Yeah. And my oldest son is like, I don't get Bitcoin at all. He thinks it's a scam. It's like, my youngest son says, <laughs> I love Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, interesting. That's interesting. And how old is your oldest? 45. You have a 45 year old? I can't believe that. Uh, and very then, young. That's true. 12 years old. Right? Uh, and, then, and then your youngest is how old? 32. Oh, no, that is interesting. So. Because one uses it, one doesn't. And huh. one. The youngest son sees Bitcoin in third world countries with massive acceptance. Really? Yeah, it's like, our, my youngest son thinks that America is falling behind technologically mm -hmm. in a significant way. Mm -hmm. Because you, know, you, you go many other places on the road, world, and one, he hates Wi-Fi in the US. Because he lived in Korea for two years. In Korea, they do have public accessible Wi-Fi everywhere. Huh. I mean, and it's fast. It makes our internet look, and it's shocking. You're on the subway, and you're on the subway, and everybody's on their phone, and they're all watching TV. <laughs> and you think, okay, they're delivering Wi-Fi for thousands of people streaming video, and it works flawlessly. So, they, they typically have a five gigabyte a second Wi-Fi pretty much everywhere in Korea. Mm. In this office, we have a 10 megabyte per second Wi-Fi shared for 116 people. Wow. <laughs> it's it like, doesn't work fine. <laughs> yeah. So I think, okay, so he feels like we're, we're technologically behind. So it made me think of this quote that says, most people mistake the limits of their own field of vision for the limits of the world. And I really, you know, as I was listening to them debate about Bitcoin and, you know, I always think, okay, what's, so I just thought I'd ask you guys, what is currently limiting your vision? Is there anything that currently you think is, you may be limiting your own vision in? My answer, I think, is much broader than what it needs to be. Because, again, generally it's myself, of course, but my own, it's all my predetermined uh, judgments or, or, okay. or uh, you know, based on what we talked about before, my uh, making assumptions of things, whether it be myself or others. That's limiting my vision, you know, and also, you know, getting outside of my own box because my box is that comfort zone of things I know, of the way I do things, the 
my world around me, and so it's very easy and safe to stay within that box. Uh, which also goes into another topic we talked about. Right. <laughs> right. So, I know. It's it's just all those, so that's very, but those are very general responses in that, but that limits my vision because I'm safe in that zone staying within it. And so to think outside and go beyond to push the boundaries is what needs to be done. And it, it is interesting, as I was listening to my oldest son, I could see that he was stuck in this oh. construct of what is money. Right. You know, if you can't physically touch it. <laughs> yes, because we've had this conversation with my kids, and yet we do everything electronic banking, we, do, we don't touch money hardly as much. We use our ATM card, we use a credit card. We're not seeing the cash like in my parents' days either. I'm sure that with each trade system, you know, people were like, that's not going to work, you know? I mean, it had to have been that, you know, first they traded, I don't know, animals or whatever, and then they traded whatever, the food, bartering, to, bartering yeah. And then, and then when the credit system came about, I'm sure that they were like, oh, that's not going to fly. Well, <laughs> well, Bitcoin, because it's, again, for speaking of that specifically, because it's like increased in value to this, Crazy. people that had it early, it's kind of got, you know, feel of uncertainty, like how could that be? And it's not tangible, it's not really a tangible coin. It's a yeah. so, and even the thought of there's a gentleman who had it on his computer, and he I don't remember the exact story or how much it was, but he was an early adopter, adopter of it, and he got rid of his computer with the hard drive and lost all his Bitcoin because it was a virtual oh. coin with whatever. Oh, God. So like you think, you know, as, as a person that's not familiar with it, you hear the horror stories, you think the worst things. Right. Again, that's what, with all of us, with, the, with our vision too, you think of the worst case scenario mm -hmm. and it, it makes you scared of those things that you're not familiar with. And my youngest son, like I said, my old son says, it's just a cheaper version of Visa and MasterCard. Yeah. But it feels like there's nobody behind yeah. it. And that's the value of it. Right. <laughs> there's nobody right. has the money <laughs> hands into it. But, but that's also, like if something goes wrong, you have nobody to go to. Like that's, the, like my, again, if we're speaking about that, I, I'd be, and I, my kids have invested, I'm like, it's done so well, but like, from a, almost like a stock standpoint, but I don't know what the future holds. And it, I know, we, we could look back in five years and go, do you remember that day when we were sitting and talking with Greg about Bitcoin? And now so many of our transactions are Bitcoin, you know, and whereas right now it's sort of like, I'm not really sure, you know. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. So just, just put that in perspective and think about your own limitations. So here's the question I have for you guys. What is the most valuable thing I can do for you guys in the next month? Okay, I love how he always asks these questions. Because <laughs> everything you do is valuable. And I, and I have to say in this last quarter, um, even though my results aren't speaking for this last quarter, I feel like I've gotten more for my own personal value and my life in what we've discussed. And it just gets me so excited for what's to come, although I really am focused on what I need to do daily, more on what, are the, what the results are gonna be, because that's coming. Um, and yesterday, I, you know, when you talk about what is limiting my vision, um, I've been listening to Darren Daly. Do you know what Darren Daly is? Darren Hardy, he's the guy that wrote that compound effect, the compound okay. effect. And, um, and he was saying that what limits us, really the only thing that limits us is our um, courage. And that courage is a choice. And most of us are worried about being foolish. And so what he says is, go be foolish. And um, the true personal growth only comes from those who can risk failing. And 
I can't say that what I've done is like risking failing, but I have worried about looking foolish. And it's like, throw all that out the window, because that, therein lies our success. Well, it's it it interesting when you think about it, looking foolish stops a lot of us. We don't want to look stupid, we don't want to look foolish, we don't want to look this way. But when we think about that, we're putting all of the power in what everybody else out there is, instead of saying, well, <laughs> why do I even care what these relatively strangers even think? Exactly. So why do I even let that you know, yeah. come into my play, into how I'm living my life? Mm -hmm. And it, it is really amazing when you, when you think about it, we live so much thinking about what other people might think about us, mm -hmm. and that limits us so often. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the, a little aside on that saying is, there's something I've ever read a long time where we try to like, hide almost those things that we think that are shortcomings, and everybody knows them anyway. Like, so what <laughs> everybody knows. Like and you work so hard trying to hide it, uh, everybody knows it. So like, yeah. stop working to try to hide it. Just yeah. be who you are. Yeah. Yes, I do think that it is shocking. Well, so for each of you, what is the single th most important thing that you can accomplish this week to, to move you towards your goals? What is the single most okay. important thing? Okay, you know, hold on. I, I already did those this is, yesterday. This is new. I, I this. Well, I have three things that I want to accomplish this week. One is watch my listing presentation, although I'm sure I'll be cringing a lot. And, um, and then number two is to do the personal value worksheet, because um, I need to work on my slogan, because that's my third okay. thing this week. Because it, it's, it's all about putting together that buyer's package and getting that system done so I can put that one to bed. Okay. That's for this week. I mean, I've got a bunch more to work on, but... <laughs> so, I've heard watch your listing presentation, mm -hmm. your, do your values clarification, and what was the third one? Uh, figure out what my slogan is. Okay, figure out your slogan, okay. <laughs> uh, a single thing? Well, you had three. Can I have well, one? Well, you just have one. No, because I, I'm a list person, okay. so it's usually multiple key things. Yeah. And I mean, for me, so like, if, if you had to limit it to, to the one or two things that were just the most important things of you that would move you towards your goal, what would that be this week? One is complete, you know, because I'm working on the marketing, uh, you know, brochure, and one is just to complete the questionnaires. Pages, the questionnaires. <laughs> That's one, one of the major, major things. That okay. I, just, what questionnaire? The same one? No, oh. it, it's a little different. But, um, oh, okay. For, uh, Brochure, like a oh. brochure, and it's like it's one of those things because it's a you know that big elephant and it's uh, taking a bite at a time. It's like okay, why well, would it? Well, I have several hours, you know, to. to uh -huh. <laughs> um, but I think that's a key thing that I need to just sit down. This week, I'm thinking, you know, I've got to schedule it. It just seems like it's a good week to do these kinds of things. I mean, I, I have on here possibly a couple of days, but, but I mean, because it just seems like it's sort of, you know, right now it just seems a little flat, and, and I, well, not for you maybe, okay, cool. No, but it's, just, yeah, it's, it's never flat. I, I, okay, I'm going to that, but I, I just think that it's like, this is, you know, You're right. when, when like it seems like, the holiday. yeah, and, and, when, and, and when we have a moment to breathe, it's like, okay, I'm not going on vacation. I'm going to complete a couple of things so that my next week will set up, you know, right. really nice. Tee it up. You know, not that I golf, but if I do, that's what I do. <laughs> that's right. Did you like that? That's shit. Uh, so I wasn't even thinking golf. Like, I didn't sit oh. a second. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't golfed in a while. Yes, yeah. no, I'm like, tee it up, tee it up. I just didn't click. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's so, your slogan? I don't know yet. Oh, guy. And, and he's he's having a person work on it. Oh, guy. Because I know if I yes, do, I know. I, I really I want to have a person work on it. Not gonna, yeah. I need to rely on somebody else's expertise. Yeah, That's I know. No, I get it. Together. I totally get that. It's worth it. Yeah. Otherwise, it won't happen. Yeah, I know. 
right. or not as quickly as it needs to. So why is completing that questionnaire important to you? Because to me it's a focal point of knowing what I'm about and also being able to share that with potential clients or with, you know, and I mean, now that it's kind of been in my head and that, that I need that, I keep seeing situations where I need it. Like I need that brochure, I need to have what I'm, what I'm, who I am and what I'm about and what I'm trying to share with everybody generally. I think I do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but this is an opportunity to keep sharing myself with those when I'm not one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, for, for example, I have a situation in my farm of you know, meeting with somebody, I have to do a proposal basically, it's on an estate. And I'm like, oh, I had that for sure, it'd be like one of those pieces that would be ready to go and put in there with everything else. Uh, you know, just, it's a constant thing that I just need because it's part of promoting my, my business and yeah. myself. Right. I... So, and so if you stay focused on why that's important and think about, I found it's easier for you to stay focused on those activities. So why is watching your listening presentation important to you? Because I haven't, you know, I did that a month ago, and I can't believe it's already been a month, and I wanted to take a couple of months and not completely lock in my listing presentation, but really focus on it and just, you know, get that confidence back up to get out there and, you okay. know, and, and so I thought, okay, one step. I mean, it's like 45 minutes. It's not a big deal. Just watch it, take some notes, you know, keep working on it. It's just a, a process. And just watching it will make you better. Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> and what's keeping you from watching it? Oh, I just haven't done it. Because for me, I have a hard time watching videos oh, myself. I know, I hate watching and myself. So for that, and I remember Robin saying something, I just don't watch it, and I'm like, that just eased like a whole pressure thing for me, because I don't necessarily want to watch. I mean, maybe. But it's like certain things I just don't want to watch, because I, yeah. I, I I know I, I can't I can't stand hearing my voice on a recording I can't you know <laughs> but I mean yesterday I took like three videos of me at that house and tried to put it on Facebook but there's no Wi-Fi at the house and nothing but anyway I just went and forget it I'm just not even gonna put that out there. And the funny thing is is I because I've seen a number of your videos and I always enjoy them. I well, thank really you. Fresh. I just think they're really energetic and they personify you. And, and I know for myself, it's like, I, yeah, it's one of those. Well, and it things. takes me back to the stepping into the courage. Yeah. And, and also, the last person that walked into the open house, I stayed open until 5 yesterday. They came in at like 4.35. And I'm so glad I stayed open because that they were like, they're the gold in the whole thing. And, um, and when they first came in, she, you know, I connected with her right away. And then he like tapped her arm, so I thought, okay, I'm not going to pay attention to that. I'm just going to keep going. And um, then he said later, you know, we'd like to have you come over and take a look at our house and blah, blah, blah. So the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, so Greg, can you come over with me? Because I'm relaying, relying on somebody else instead of just myself, instead of stepping into the courage and going, I can handle this. It's a house evaluation. It's not brain surgery. You're sharing information. You're just sharing your persona, too. It's all about you. It's partly about you. That's all. Yeah. I mean, it, well, just for creating the relationship, right? right. It's just Which you're awesome at. Awesome at. So it, like, the, the, it is. Shoot. Right? Yeah. That's right. You are. Yeah. <laughs> you are. It's the part I love. It is. It is all about relationship building. I am. It is, it is when we get locked into the weird things like, am I going to have the factual numbers enough that we get ourselves into trouble? That's right. If we go in and focused on building the relationship and the rapport, mm -hmm. I found that numbers don't matter nearly as much. Mm -hmm. In fact, I found that the more rapport and more relationship you build, the more flexibility you have in the numbers. Trust. Yeah. Because it's, they're selecting you. Mm -hmm. They're not selecting the numbers. Mm -hmm. And we keep thinking they're gonna select the numbers but the great agents understand they're selecting them. So they focus on the rapport, the building out. That's such good stuff right there, isn't it? Thank goodness, because we, <laughs> where would we be? When you think, you talk about the numbers, and you know, if you want to just look at a CMA, yeah. it, the CMA can say this, and it's still gonna sell for this. It's what you're gonna do to help get as many people in there. Right. So really, like, 
that's just an indication of what the past is and what the current situation is. That doesn't, you know, whether they understand it or not, mm -hmm. you know, your job is to get everybody in and see what the highest you can get. Mm -hmm. And so that's you. It's not the numbers. Right. Right. And, and we tend to forget that this is this is a relationship building business at its core in every aspect. And yet so many agents get hung up on well, I lost a listing because the price I reckon was too low, somebody listed it higher. And and to me, I I never believe that's true. The reason they didn't get the listing is they didn't build enough rapport. That's that's always the case. If you build enough rapport, it overcomes literally everything. Now, to me, that's that's the one thing that, that people tend to lose sight of over and over again, is that they get so hung up on pricing or commission or different things, and yet, you know, within reason. I mean, if you if you build great rapport and then you say, well, I want a hundred percent commission. That probably won't work, mm -hmm. but you know, <laughs> if you are reasonably within a range, the rapport is always the answer that's going to make it the biggest difference. So, is there anything stopping you from accomplishing getting your video watched this week? Um, well, we are. <laughs> We are still working on our flooring. Our flooring is in, but we're still waiting for a couple of areas to be done. And, and it's like, once that's completed, then we've got to put our house back together. And so I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to get that put back together and do all the other stuff I want to get done this week. So, so is there a sign on your floor that says, don't watch that video? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's here's the real question then. When this week are you going to set aside two hours to watch the video and think about it? Mm -hmm. Look at our calendar. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I really want. Um, I don't know. Okay, so like, oh, do we have our Tuesday morning with Robin tomorrow morning or not? No. No, because we're done with the four of these. Oh, okay, good. So tomorrow from time right there. nine to eleven. Oh no, no, that from wait, our our class was at twelve thirty to one thirty. Um, yeah. So at ten o'clock, I'm gonna watch the video. Wow, Greg. All right. See how good you and are. No Thursday. Huh? Morning meeting either. And there's no Thursday, but I've already got my exercise class that I've been missing for months. <laughs> <laughs> Scheduled. So, 10 a.m. to noon, watch video. How simple is that? So, <clears throat> schedule it. That's it. So, that's I, it. I, it's not on your schedule, it doesn't exist. That's I, right. I, I do want you to know that there's going to be something that's going to come up. It's going to try to move you. It's going to try and move you from that. So, I want to put some, some consequences in here. Okay. Who is the one person that you dislike the most on the planet? Hmm. Well, I was going to say LeBron James. The one person that I despise the most dislike. on the planet, that I did dislike the most on the planet. Just, I'm sorry, I don't know. Somebody that... <clears throat> Oh, I somebody know. That irritates oh, you or... oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got somebody. Okay, so think that that person. Mm -hmm. And if you don't watch your video when you say you're going to, will you commit to sending them $20 for the thank you note? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually already sent him a send out card the other night because I was, because it's my, um, it's my one of my best friend's boyfriends, and I cannot stand him. <laughs> so I, I guess you found this is this is oh, usually. Is that going to be taken off of the table? <laughs> <laughs> They'll never figure it out. Okay. So I, I, I found that people that you know 
sometimes a cause, a, a group really irritates them. Mm -hmm. And I'll use that, if, if you don't do this, you have to send them money. Okay. And it's like, tends to get them to motivate it. Just <laughs> 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 All right, so anything stopping from you completing your questionnaire? Putting on the calendar, scheduling it. So when are you going to put it on your calendar? Okay. What today? What day is it? We say we have a meeting. So Thursday, we normally have at nine o'clock. Right. Like then this is a funky week this week. I know that's what makes it fun. <laughs> it is. So I'm going to do Thursday. That's why you're live right here. Thursday from nine till twelve. Okay. And whatever you complete during those two hours, I'll just send to Dennis. Don't even think about it. Just, even if you know you're going to go and add a little bit more, just get him going. Okay. I haven't started it. I've got to the hard part of it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, you like, see a piece of cake, and then it's like, oh, I'm stumped. So, Adam, the question is, what, <clears throat> what is the single most important thing for you to accomplish this week? Ooh, um, well, <laughs> I have to do uh, four power blocks this week. That is signed by Lou Izzo. And a power block is three hours of just insane prospecting, whether it's three hours of door knocking, three hours of three hours of uh, cold calling or three hours of calling your SOI. It's just three hours of And one block is three hours? And, one block. and you have to do four of them? Do four. Oh my gosh, so, that's good. Yeah. Permission to coach? Yes. So, first of all, you said something that just always makes me cringe. Uh-oh. That it will work against you. You said, I have to. I get to. And if you just change have to to I'm choosing to. Yes. Because now it's your choice. You're in control. Okay. okay. When you say I have to, Lou is in control. <laughs> <laughs> and internally, we just set ourselves up for struggle when we say, well, I have to. Because it's like some external force is coming to us. And we have these autonomy wars inside of us that say, no, I'm going to control my life. But when you say, I choose to do these four power blocks, you're gonna find it easier to actually do that. So, <clears throat> when do you have these four power blocks scheduled? Um, I don't yet. So, do you have a calendar in front of you? I do. It looks like you do. I do. So, what are, you, what are you gonna schedule? Well, I want to do, in the afternoon, so I'm gonna do two to five, and today I'm actually going to start and go from 3 to 6 because I have an appointment at 2. And then I'm going to do Tuesday from 2 to 5. I'm going to do Thursday from 2 to 5. And then I'm going to do Saturday morning from 9 to noon. Okay. And if you don't accomplish those, are you going to send Lou an extra $100? <laughs> Say I didn't. Well, no, because I like it. Well, five hundred dollars. But but you go through his training program. And he said, "Here's the things you need to do. <laughs> if you don't do them, you need to pay him extra." So to, just think about what what are those commitments to do that. So what's the single most important thing for you to do this week? Well, the single most important thing that I'll be doing right after this meeting is, and it's a question for you I have too. I have a client wants to, we've been working on an offer, and he wants to change the terms of it. He said, should I raise it $2,000? Last night I said, no, raise it $5,000 and remove your 
appraisal contingency, thought about it, texted me about half hour ago, goes, let's do it. So I don't know, do I send a um, amended, uh, just like an amendment to the contract or a whole new contract to the listing agent? Yes. <laughs> the last one. Either one works. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to go with the, the amendment then. So to me, it's like in, in something like that, if you already submitted an offer, you can submit an amendment and it just instantly becomes part of the contract or you can okay. just do a, whole, do a whole new contract. So I tell people, whichever you feel more comfortable with or think is easier, just Because it's not a valid contract yet, right? It's still in... It's still, it's, yeah, and he's been getting bombarded with this um, property, so I think I'll do the one page. I think he'll, that that will be easier for him. Okay. You mean the seller or the, the listing agent? He, yeah, yeah. Sales, so. Okay. Because there's something just in, Steve, uh, Leslie just wrote up about using, when you use an amendment versus when you use. Oh, the, really? After it's a contract, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's, but it's like an AME or a, something. Oh, AME, I'm going to have to read that. Which is that. after you have a valid contract yes. that you're making a change, like, let's say somebody passed away and now a new person signed or whatever. Oh, yeah. No, so we're not, we, we forward a contract, but we're not in contract. It's not signed yet. Yeah, it hasn't been accepted. So it's, so the amendment is the one that okay. it's before. See, I mean, before you have a contract, you can amend it. Amend it. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I mean, after the fact, you can still amend it. You just have to have agreement before you do the amendment. You really, because it takes both parties to agree to any change. Once it's once right. you once you've got it beforehand, before they've signed the the offer, you can. Oh no, we're away. just telling now. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Just wondered what it feel like to say that. <laughs> so why is it important for you this week to do your four? Powerful uh, Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm a part of a team within the, the training program, and I've committed to my teammates to do a certain amount of power block hours for our next our next session, which is the last Thursday of this month. Wait a minute. Why are you doing it though? Not for them. Well, we all committed to hold each other. I know, but why are you doing it? Because I'm choosing to. Why, why, why are you, you choosing choose, to do yes, it? Yes, <laughs> why did you choose to do this? Because I have a goal this year that I need to accomplish. And in order to accomplish that goal, um, that is one of the things that I need to do to accomplish my goal. So to share the goal, get to the, the real yeah. My yeah. goal. Is, my goal is to, to complete tra 10 transactions this year. Awesome. Nine, um, nine and why, why is that important to you? That's the goal I had set for myself. Why? And why is that important to you? Well, that's a good question. Until you know that answer, mm -hmm. doing the things necessary become much harder. The clearer you are on why that's important to you. Oh. Why do I want to make X number of dollars? A lot of times people will come and say, oh, I want to make $250,000. And they can't explain why. And chances of them making it, every super wealthy person I've met, when you ask them, why did you do X, Y, Z to make money? They have a very clear, because I wanted to do X. I wanted this amount of, Freedom. I wanted to be able to do X, Y, Z, and I found that clarity really helps. What I call declutter your life, because now when interesting opportunities come up, they can distract you. You can either get distracted or you can say, "No, my goal is this. Is why this is important to me." So I'm going to stay focused on doing X, Y, Z. So that's why always keeping in mind why am I doing this is such a driver to get us to to move forward. So why is it important to you to to get this contract done? Because this is one of my um, favorite clients. It'll be our. 
fourth transaction together, and his wife absolutely loves his house. And I really want them to have it. And then, um, so if, and there's more. If they got it, okay, so keep going. We're listing his uh, family home, that's an investment home, in about a week. And I know if, um, if the market doesn't respond to our list price, I know it'll be a lot easier to deal with him to get appropriate price reductions, which makes my job a lot less stressful. Even though I try not to let that stress me out because I have no control over that. Okay. Only I can only advise. But when you really like your clients, you really want the best for them, so it gets a more personal thing. So if you were able to help her get that, house, how would you feel? I feel fantastic. I feel like I really accomplished something really important. Okay. So to me, it's like keep in touch with that, that meaningful feel that this is going to be the outcome, that this is the feeling and, and it will make a huge difference. So three ideas from each of you on how you can keep on track and move forward this week to make sure that what you want to accomplish this week gets done. Who wants to go first? I will. Okay. Well, I just found out because I haven't been in email um, the past day and a half. I got a great accountability partner and I and I love the accountability partner thing and I have to confess something about two weeks ago I was thinking wow I've, I've gone beyond my commitment to do this and I've met some really great people in the office and it's that alone has been fantastic because we're like ships in the night and um, I thought oh I'm gonna just let Greg know I'm kind of done with that accountability stuff and you know, I'm just done. And then I got Kim Schumacher. And oh my gosh, she just like really changed my life this past week. And um, and then she was texting me on Saturday saying, gosh, I loved being your accountability partner and you gave me like the best business advice ever. And I am so grateful for you. And I was like, me? Okay, you, you're grateful for me because I'm like, you know, having this total girl crush on her. And because I respect her so much. So now I'm all like revitalized again. You thank him. So now I'm all revitalized again to do this account accountability thing because if I would have given up when I thought, okay, I'm done, um, I wouldn't have got to know Kim as like how I do. And I wouldn't have been so excited now. And she was so spot on. I mean, she's better than me. I mean, she like remember to do her evening. That's where I forget in the evening. And I'll even have a text started like, oh, I, I got this done and this done. And you know, I got it queued up as I get things done. And I forget to finish it and send it. And it's like nine o'clock at night, but not her. Boy, hers would come in right at 6 p.m. And it's like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot. So you know, you know, those cell phones do have alarms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Of course, she knows how to do it. I have that. that. And then she, she is just like so structured. I love because I, I thrive in structure, and I have to get myself more structured. And and she's just really encouraging me to do that. It's just I'm just really encouraged today. So it it, it is interesting. Most people, I mean, probably 95% of the population, the research shows that they really do much better with structure. Mm -hmm. And real estate is one of the most unstructured businesses out there. Oh, nice. And so we have to bring the structure to it for us to succeed. This is where you've got to develop that entrepreneurial drive because entrepreneurs tend to find a way to be structured in a unstructured environment. And that's really what real estate is about, is how to find structure when there's this huge opportunity to do almost anything. 
So that's, that's a good insight. May, may I add something else too? I think one of the reasons too that um, Kim and I really um, struck a chord is because uh, even though I'm older than her, we're like relatively close in age. It's not like she's like 25 and I'm 58. And, um, and we are both women that support ourselves. So we don't want to be messing around. It's like we don't have time to mess around. So I did, I, I really liked that a lot. And there was something else I wanted to have, but I just forgot. It was like another thing like that's going to keep me on track. All right. But I forgot. Entrepreneurial type type thing. But it's so true. It is so true. We're so wishy-washy. And, and we let things get us off track when we shouldn't. There's so many shiny objects in real estate. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is what I typically do, but it's still what I need to do. So, list daily items, goals, I need to do that mm -hmm. many. Schedule those items, goals on the calendar. Complete the items on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my three things that will keep me moving forward. Okay. I mean, to me, it's like, you know, I think it's so valuable to pick something you're going to do in the day and say, I'm going to work on that. And, or literally get that done. If you get one thing done a day, you'll make progress. Yeah. Unfortunately, most people never get a single thing completed. They just keep jumping from things to things, and they're, they've got a thousand uncompleted half tasks. Yeah. Well, Martin made me think of it because it's part of the accountability part is that, I mean, yeah, I do this, but if somebody is kind of keeping me honest with myself. So that's what the beauty of the accountability is. And you have to kind of every day kind of think about what you're doing, and then do it. That's what I really like. Or you like. have to do push-ups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what made me feel really good too is because rarely do I have a day, even if I only make three top goals, that I get them completely and wholly done. And Kim was having the same struggles. And it's like I admire her so much for her tenacity and her business savvy. And I was seeing that even she but, but she was still trying to plow through, and, and I'm like, you know, I need to be kinder to myself, and not, because I'm just wasting so much energy being hard on myself. I did, I did the fourth agreement. I did my best. Mm -hmm. So All therefore, right. I should not, I should not. Preach yourself up. Mm -hmm. And we would talk about the book a lot, even though she didn't do the class, so I got her the book. Well, and to me, it's like, remember that, if you're doing your best, then you have to give yourself the agreement of being impeccable with your word yes. and not spreading poison to yourself about yourself. Because mm. yes. remember, that's the first agreement. Yes. <laughs> Be impeccable with your word. And I think we tend to understand it in relationship to gossip. But I think we miss the fact that the number one place we gossip is to ourselves about ourselves. Oh, yeah. That I would never say about another person, never. No. What then, I say to myself about myself in my head, I, would, I, I can't remember ever doing that. So don't, don't do that to yourself anymore. I'm, I'm really <laughs> shutting down. I'm really trying to um, you know, tame those thoughts, chain them up. Because they're horrible. So here's the key. Remember that we can't chain them up or get rid of them. What we can do is change them. As soon as we find ourselves having, you know, putting ourselves down, to me, that's when you, you need to have some sort of either a little quick mantra like, I love myself too much to say that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, Whatever it is that you can mentally focus on for just 10 seconds that will change your thought. Yeah. So to me, it's like, there's a, I have a few things uh, that I mentally say, what's the person I want to be? And I want to be, and I have a list of things. And if you just repeat those, you can get outside of those negative thoughts much faster. And All the right. more we do it, the easier it gets. 
Um, I, I want to say um, that uh, in the last two weeks, because we've had our calendars now for uh, a quarter, and I'm going, I didn't even use 1% of the calendar, you know? Um, but what I did just really focus on was getting the three things done that they ask for every day. They, you know, you get three things. What are your top three? And, and all week last week and the week before, I got those three things done. And I was up early and went to bed, um, you know, like every single day I would go to bed and I would go, I feel like a farmer. Because <laughs> I would just, I left it all out in the field. I did it all every single day. And like I said, the results aren't here yet, but they're coming. And just staying focused on the, um, the process. And so I really only have two things, but I know that I need to have three. But... Um, I, it's again the structure, the three per day, and sticking to that. Um, and then I just love that chapter about always do your best. I mean, I just thought that about every 10 seconds. It, as soon as I'd start to feel myself going, ah, you know, it's like always do your best. And it would just pull me right back out of it. And I had such a fantastic week because, I mean, six days on, one day off, the old six and one, you know. I gotta keep doing that for a while. All right. Six and one. <laughs> All right, Adam. So, any ideas on what you're gonna do? Uh, well, I wrote down three. Uh, the first thing that, first idea that came to mind is, is time blocking. Okay. Uh, it's one, of my, one of my weaknesses that I need to change. Uh, or that I would love to change is uh, being much better at time blocking. Uh, so I need to be more purposeful in my time blocking. Uh, number two, the second thing that actually really popped into my mind is my listing pre-sale practice. Because as I'm moving forward, um, I want to be able to be confident that should I get an appointment, that I could close that appointment. Uh, so I think being prepared with my listing presentation in my back pocket, uh, I think is, is very important because what good is door knocking and prospecting if I'm not going to be able to do well during the appointment. And then number three is accountability. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited to work with Margaret this week. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be great. Um, so I think uh, accountability is, is going to be really helpful. So, and to me it's like, make sure that when you're, you want to be the best accountability partner you can for the other person. And I think sometimes if the other person is not as great of what we think they should be, we can just slack off. Uh -huh. What you need to do is say, okay, here's somebody I can really make a difference for. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them a great example of what a great accountability partner actually is. I love and that. And don't be concerned about you know, what they're doing for you. Think about what you can do to help them. Yes. And you know, demonstrate that value to them, and, and you'll find that you'll get more out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I love that. Good. And I love that you shared that it's like you went through a few weeks of bleh. I have a question for Adam, too. You know, got yeah, that so did you, by chance, in the boot camp for Coach Robin, did you do the texting every 15 minutes by chance? Did that was that hard. I did. That was tough. It was, it was so it was, hard. It was probably the hardest thing in that. That was but, tough. But that helped me with fear. You know, with time, because it, it yeah. helps with time blocking. Because you start, for me at least, it helped me see a consistency that I did every day. Mm -hmm. And like, well, because the, the key of it is like, what am I doing now? Not what you want to be, and that's the goal is what I, where I want to be. But what am I doing now? Mm -hmm. And that helped me see what I was doing now to time block. And then where do I need to alter that? What do I need more spend more time? I know that helped me for that in that part of it for time blocking. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome, Pablo. Thank you. So uh, today we've been talking about what are the what is the most important thing that everybody needed to get done this week, and why that was important to them. And we talked about a variety of different things to to help them move them in there and move forward. So, top three insights from today. Not beat yourself up. Yeah, I'm choosing to, not I have to. I'm very, very clear why. Mm -hmm. 
That's a good one. Stay clear on the whys. Stay clear on the whys. Understand you're in control, that you're choosing it. It's like, and it's some little things, but it's, again, it's that language pattern that we have with ourselves where we give our control away. I mean, when I worked for Jim, he would not let anybody ever attribute any of their emotions to any external source. So I still remember, you know, it's like, if somebody came in and said, my girlfriend and my wife is making me mad, he would look at them and said, what? <laughs> and everybody would, I know, okay. The way I'm talking to myself about it is making me mad. But that's great. It's like, it's never, <clears throat> when we give our control and power to outside sources, we lose control. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's just, you know, watching our language so we don't attribute you know, our power to the traffic or to a client or to other types of things. And it just makes a huge difference psychologically if we can catch ourselves in that. I love that. And, you know, it reminds me of yesterday I had one couple come in and, you know, I had my packets and I had my spacio and I was like, ready for everybody and this couple came in and they were they did not want to have anything to do with me but, hi i'm lisa and they just like passed my hand out oh excuse me and they went to the house so fast and they were just rude and then they left and i'm like chasing after them going did you want any information <laughs> okay so <laughs> what I, so instead of you know i was like they were so rude and i just you know i was going there mad at them instead i was like sending them love and helping them be safe as they sped away in their nice Mercedes and um, and thought, what could I have done differently, you know, so I could make it a learning thing instead. And it just changes everything when you look at that instead of focusing and letting that tear up your your day when it was a great day. <laughs> and, and to me, it's like, that's, that's where don't let any one person ever throw you off your game and realize that you're never going to make everybody happy. Right. So it's, you know, it, it's okay. Don't, you know, beat yourself up. It's like, in, to me, trying to find it out, I hear so many agents trying to find what I call the magic bullet to the one in a million situations. Now, it's like, I was just listening to Robert in the Four Agreement thing, the last one. All these weird exceptions to the rules that he comes up with. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you could spend a whole career and never have that situation happen. And never have a transaction because you're worried about these things. <laughs> don't, don't sweat that. It's like, yeah. you know, and especially for somebody like you that you know. 99% of the people love you. I mean, if... Maybe that's the slogan. 99% love me. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, okay, the, the one percenters just don't matter. Don't even give them another thought. Right. So to me, it's like, just set those aside and, and, and move forward. Yeah. All right, so next week, I was thinking about starting to go through how to build a game plan. Mm -hmm. Now, building a marketing game plan is sometimes frustrating to people. A lot of people say they want to do a marketing game plan, mm -hmm. but before you can build a marketing game plan, you have to have some decisions made. Like, who is my target marketplace? What is my core marketing message? And those are actually the things, because people never answer them, they tend to get stuck because, okay, <laughs> I just want a marketing plan of all these activities to do to keep me on track, but I don't have any message to actually build it on so it becomes impossible. So before we go down that path, because I will force you to make difficult choices. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that 
that would be valuable for you. And if oh, there's yeah. something else more valuable, I'm open to that. Yeah. It's right. funny you I'm say in. that because I just got your packet out when you talked to us at corporate about you know what what um, how to get started on that path and what your company does and everything. And I got your packet out and I'm like I'm going through this. All right. So. <laughs> I mean, not get pissed off. <laughs> <So did I. laughs> All right, so uh, thanks for being here this morning. We'll see you next Monday at 9 o'clock. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. Good to have you here. I got, I got stuck on a call and couldn't get out of it. That's okay. We'll hopefully yeah. make it next week. We and love we'll having go from you there. anytime. So, Nick, so we, should we have that those questions answered for next week? Well, if you want to get a jump on it, that would be great. Yeah. Let, me, let me give you the the. The questions that we're going to start with. Come on, computer. So, to build a good marketing game plan, here are the things you actually need. A clearly defined target marketplace. Who exactly is your target marketplace? And if you say everyone, the entire state not of really defined. <laughs> you've already failed. <laughs> so, the other thing is, Oh. How does your client base, if you right now, if, if, if we ask them, how do they perceive you? Now, for some of you, this could be easy because they don't know you. So they don't perceive me in any way because they've never heard of me. But then think about how they perceive your major competition in that area. The next is, what are your objectives? What do you really want to accomplish with your marketing? Now, this needs to be clear in terms of dollars, perception building, and how your business operates. Like, how many hours a week do you want to work to accomplish this? Because if you just come up with a set of objectives, I want to make $500,000 a year, what I found is that now that becomes your entire life. If you say, I want to make $500,000 a year working 35 hours a week, you will have a much better chance of getting to the $500,000 in 35 hours a week. So think about how this affects your life, not just a dollar figure of goals. And as I've worked with Phil Herman over the years, it's interesting because to me, he's always been very clear on this. He says, you know, I want to make X number of dollars and I want X number of weeks of vacation. I want these days off and I want to end on these times. He has very clearly defined, here's what I want my life to look like and still accomplish these set of income goals. Then what is your core marketing message? What's the message that you're building your brand around? The next thing you need is what are the, the media options that you have available to you? Then, once you actually generate a lead, what is your mark plan for following up on that lead? What's, what's clear, clearly defined step of activities that you use to, that, and what are the decision points that you evaluate and put either on a just a long-term hold campaign, remove from your database, so that you strategically know, here is the follow-up plan. And this is where I see so many people blow it, because they generate leads, but then they don't have a clear plan. They follow up for three, four weeks, and they let it all slip to their fingers. Then what is your budget? And how are you gonna measure results? 
And those are the actually things you need to have in place before you actually create a good business plan. That's why so few agents have a good business plan. Because they have to answer these things before. Otherwise, you can create an activity plan, but the activities don't connect to the core behind it. So it's just activities, and it's easy to get distracted by other shiny objects. <laughs> all right. And we'll talk a little bit about all of these and sort of start working on a plan. All right. We'll see you next week. <laughs>